So let's just quickly test. There we go. Hello and welcome to a new video. This is going to be the first in a just a small little series where we make a first person controller from scratch. So as you can see I've got a basic scene set up here. This is, I think it was called the Fantasy Environment Pack. It's a free asset on the Asset Store. I'll obviously put a link to that in the description below. And all we're going to do is we are going to make a first person controller that we can use to move around the environment. It's going to be physics controlled and we will eventually, in this part we're just going to get movement going, but we will also Add things like first person weapons for example so let's get started so the first thing we're going to want to do is create our player object so if you just go down to here and we're just going to create an empty and we'll call it first person we'll just call it first person i guess we need it to be well we'll drag it into our camera for now and reset the transform reset position reset rotation and then drag it back out of our camera so we know it's in the right place and then we want a camera inside there the first thing to do is to drop the height because obviously our player isn't going to be sat three feet above the ground or whatever that is. And then we need to add to it a capsule collider so we can actually see, you know, where our player is. We'll give it a height of, I'll say 1.8 is a nice standardized height for a player. And he's not going to be that fat, so we'll say 0 0.3. And now that we can see the bounds of our first person player, we can bring him up to a better height. There will do. And then the camera, we obviously want to be somewhere up here around head height. So we'll leave it we'll leave the camera there and now that we've done that we're ready to add some scripts let's go into our script folder i'll create a new script first person controller open that up so before we get into anything we need to grab some inputs and we're going to create a function for this so we'll just call it void get inputs and then in here, we're going to do any checking of the mouse or keyboard that we want to do so we'll just get a few values to store what we find in here float Horizontal, float, vertical, float, mouse X, and float, mouse Y. So horizontal is going to be where we store our left to right controls. So if you're using the keyboard, that will be your A and D key. Or if you're using a gamepad, that will be left and right. Vertical is going to be obviously up and down, uh, W and S, or up and down on the joypad. And then mouse X, mouse Y is simply, if you imagine your mouse is on a two-dimensional grid, X is left to right and Y is up and down. So then we need to populate those values and we're going to use this function to do that. So mouse X equals input dot get axis mouse X nice and simple and then same for mouse Y and then for horizontal we need input dot get axis horizontal and then once again vertical is basically identical Unity are changing or have changed maybe their uh, update their input system but if you wanted to change any of these names or add different inputs you would go into your edit menu project settings and then input and as you can see we've got this axis drop down menu here and these are all the inputs that are currently set up so basically the advantage of this is that you you could put say for example input dot get key key code dot space you could say that but then if you wanted to change the button that you used to do this you'd have to do it in code and obviously that would cause major problems if you wanted to give the player the ability to remap their controls whereas if you use the input manager you could put input dot get button and then you put the name of the button, which let's say what space is jump. There's the button for jump. And then you can simply put jump. And then anytime you wanted to change this, change what the jump button is, you just change it here. And then any references to get button jump will automatically call the right button. So now that we're getting our inputs, let's, let's just give ourselves a start function and an update function. Now that we're getting our inputs, we need a rigid body to move them. So we'll just pull this up rigid body I'm going to give it a mass of three it wants to be continuous because it's a player so we don't want him accidentally glitching through the floor and we're going to constrain his x and z rotation we don't want him toppling over or anything so in here we'll get a reference to our rigid body which we'll just call let's say our body it's fairly straightforward and then in here I'll get a reference to it 
equals get component rigid body. And because we are going to put our script on the same object as the rigid body, that then will grab this rigid body component. So back into our script, the first thing we're going to do in our update function is call our get inputs function. Basically, you could have all this in the inputs thing. This is just a little, this just makes things a little bit neater. And we are going to need a fixed update function. And the reason for that is we're going to be moving our character using physics. Now, I don't know how much you know about physics in Unity, but basically physics is locked into its own time step. So fixed update updates at a con constant interval regardless of what's going on I mean, unless the game crashes obviously regardless of what's going on with the frame rate the fixed update will always update at the same rate whereas update updates once per frame which depending on the computer depending on what you're doing that could be wildly different values so the reason we want to update movement in fixed update is because you don't want the movement of your character to be affected by the frame rate you don't want your character to get slower or faster depending on how good somebody's computer is or freeze or jump or anything like that this ensures that anything that's updated by physics is updated consistently so then we're going to need another couple of values we'll put these here so we need a quaternion which is a rotation value type We'll try and spell rotation correctly. And we need a vector three, which we're gonna call delta position. Now, if we go down to fixed update, when our delta rotation is going to equal quaternion dot Euler, and then we're gonna pass in vector three dot up. So what this is doing is this is the axis, think of it as the axis. So we are rotating around the up axis. So if you imagine this green line here, we're rotating around that axis. So we're rotating like that. If we were rotating around the blue axis, then we would be rotating like that. Think of that, think of this vector three up as that. So then we times it by mouse X, which is the left to right axis of our mouse. And then finally we times by time dot delta time now as i understand it time dot delta time when called in fixed update is basically time dot fixed delta time but if you want you can you can put fixed delta time anyway again fixed dot uh, fixed delta time is that fixed time step as opposed to the frame rate dependent time step that you get from the update loop or delta time and then we're going to call our body dot move rotation and we pass in our start rotation, which is where we currently are, times delta rotation. Let's just straighten this character up. Now if we press play, we should be able to turn him around. There we go. Obviously that's very slow. So what we'll do to fix that is we'll go up here and then we're gonna add a public bull, uh, not a bull, a float, sorry public float mouse sensitivity and then we're going to give it a value of let's say 70 to start with this wants to be quite high and then we'll give it a range value just to make it easier to adjust so we'll go from i don't think anyone's going to want zero so we'll go from 10 to 100. If we go back into here now we should see we've got a little slider we can move there and then to use that value we're just going to slide it in here times mouse sensitivity. I'm pretty sure I spelt that wrong with too many I's or T's. There we go. So if we play that again now, we should be able to move at a more reasonable or rotate at a more reasonable rate. There we go. And the advantage of rotating with the rigid body and the using the physics to rotate the actual player means that we're, we're not going to confuse issues by half moving the player with physics and half moving the player with just directly accessing the transform which can cause problems so now for some actual movement though i'm going to say delta position and don't worry about looking up and down we'll get to that delta position equals transform dot forward times 
vertical. So transform.forward obviously is the way the player is facing. That's the forward for the player, the local forward, times the vertical axis. So if you're pressing W, the vertical axis will be one. So it's essentially timesing forward by one. And then we're gonna to add to that transform.right, same principle. We're just using the right local right of the player times horizontal. So this would be your strafing movement. And then once again, times time, time dot fixed delta time. Oh, no bracket there. Is there a bracket there? There is, no, the bracket wants to be here, sorry. And then to use that, our body dot move position, and we're gonna say our body dot position plus delta position. So if we go in here and we press our keys, we can now move around. And you see, because we're using local forward, if we turn our mouse, forward changes to whichever way we are currently looking. So let's just add in a walk speed value because that was walking very slow and obviously you're gonna to want to change that. So public float walk speed and we're just gonna say that equals f uh, 3f for now, which uh, three times the speed that we were just walking should be a nice value. And then once again, we slide that in here. Quick play again. There we go, much more reasonable movement speed. And if we run over here and start, well not run, walk, and start walking up this hill, you'll see that we actually stick to the terrain because we're moving using the physics engine and the physics engine won't move the player through a collider. So already we've got a very basic functional first person controller. So onto the next step, we need to be able to look up and down as well as side to side. And to do that, we're going to need to get a reference to the camera because obviously we don't want to rotate the whole player when we look up and down. That would be silly. So we'll get a reference to the camera, which we'll just call camera, which we'll give a type and then we'll just call camera. And we'll get it through here. Camera equals camera dot main. Camera dot main, by the way, is basically the same as typing game object dot find camera essentially but we're only doing it once in the start so it's fine if you wanted to make those the rigid body in the camera public or serialized and then drag them in in the inspector that's absolutely fine as well i'm just doing it this way to keep things neat performance isn't really an issue for this tutorial and now because this one that we're about to do isn't a physics control we don't need to do it in the fixed update i'm not sure i don't think there's a reason you couldn't do it in the physics update camera you know what, actually i'm going to rename camera to camera transform because we may want to actually get our camera itself later. So camera transform dot rotate. I'm gonna say minus vector three dot right times mouse Y times mouse sensitivity times time. I've spelled mouse sensitivity wrong again. Time dot delta time. So what's happening here is, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, if I'm gonna, that wants to be a transform, not, not the actual camera component. So what's happening here is, again, think of this as kind of like an axis. We're rotating around the right axis, which once again, if I, if I click on our camera, the right axis is the red one. So rotating around that right axis makes you look up and down like that. And then we're timesing it by the mouse Y. So that's up and down on the mouse times mouse sensitivity. And then once again, times time uh, dot Delta time. So let's just try that. There we go. And now we have a fully functional lucky ground first person controller thing. So let's uh, change a few things here. So we're going to create a non-public float, which we're going to call move speed and then another public float which we'll call run speed. Uh, run speed by default, we're going to have equal five. Seems reasonable. And then we're gonna change this to move speed. And then in start, we're gonna say move speed equals walk speed. And then in update, no, sorry, not in update, in get inputs, 
we'll say if uh, we need to find what the key is actually. So just quickly check our inputs as mentioned before. Input fire is left control. Fire two is left alt. Fire three is left shift. That's the one one. So I'm going to rename that to sprint. And there should be a second one down here somewhere for the joystick. So I'm just going to rename those to sprint. I say if input dot get button down. So get button down as opposed to get button or get access or anything like that. Get button down only registers true at the moment you press the button. So if you keep your finger on the button, it doesn't keep registering every frame. Whereas if you have get button, it will register any time the update is called and your finger is on the button. So we're only calling it, this will only call once per key press. If get button down sprint, then move speed equals uh, run speed. And then if input dot get button up, which I'm sure you can work out what that does. Sprint move speed equals walk speed. So now we can walk around and if I hold down shift, we can move faster. I don't know how clearly that comes across, so I'll just increase this even further to some ridiculous value. So hopefully it's more clear in the video. Walk speed, run speed. So the last thing we're gonna do before the end of this video is we're gonna add a jump ability. So in order to do that, we first need We'll, we'll do it a quick way because we, we're going to need to do things like checking if we're grounded and all that. And I don't want to throw too much into one video. These are meant to be sort of beginner tutorials. So what we'll do is we'll go into our update and we will simply say if input dot get button down jump then our body dot velocity plus equals vector3 dot up times and then we'll give a we'll, we'll have another public value up here near walk speed run speed all that this is going to be called public float jump force and by default I'm gonna say five we can change it if we need to jump force so what the rigid body, what the rigid body's velocity value is, is basically the speed that you are currently moving in real space, in world space. So if you are stood still and not doing anything, then that velocity will be zero zero zero. If you are walking forward at a steady pace, that value might be zero zero one, like one on the z-axis. What this is doing is this is adding some upward speed, like instantly. You could use add force or move or anything like that, but th this is basically launching the player upwards. So let's just quickly test. There we go. Now the reason it's not that simple is because at the minute we've no way of checking if we're currently not in the air. So if I press it again, I can just keep jumping upwards. And obviously that doesn't, <laughs> we don't want that. I mean, maybe you want that for your game, but I'm doing a basic character controller and I don't want that in this game. So that's where I'm going to end this tutorial. In the next part, we'll get that is grounded function added in and we will add in a few other cool little bits. And then I think at some point after that, we'll, we'll stick a, a proxy weapon in there. Just something, I don't know, some basic gun that I can find for free on the asset store. Uh, and we'll get that working. And if there's anything specifically you'd like me to cover in this little mini series of tutorials then by all means leave a comment below and let me know what that is but until then thanks for watching and bye bye